Bonnie Sanders down here from Vermont to attend this morning's Creative Morning Charlotte event. Burr, it is cold out here. All right, now, your normal host, Matt Olin, is unable to host this morning, in part because he has assumed the fetal position under his desk after realizing that he will likely be the last person in the country to receive a vaccine. Okay, now, many people have been wondering what was in my manila envelope, okay? Uh, at the inauguration, so I'm here to open it. Here we go. If I can get my gloves to work. All right, it's a copy of Matt's hosting script that he gave me for this morning's Creative Morning Charlotte event. Let's see here, first and foremost. Okay, uh, Harvey Cummings, thank you for your musical talent this morning. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, my green screen's off. Let me fix that. Oh, that's maybe a little better. I don't know. You are a musical treasure. I want to give a special shout out to those of you joining us on YouTube from around the country and around the world. We are so glad you are with us this morning. Hmm. Now, even though Matt couldn't be here, his co-host Tim Miner could be here. So let's bring him on. Tim, where are you Zoom casting from this morning? It looks like you're also somewhere very cold. I am, uh, Bernie, I'm here I'm at the Charlotte Tool Bank, which is a really incredible resource in Charlotte. Uh, I think I can take my mask off for a second. It's an incredible resource in Charlotte where nonprofits and creatives can apply and get tools and materials that they need to put on their events for like significantly below market rate. And I'm in the warehouse and it's cold. Maybe not that cold, but I'm, I'm cold. Well, Tim, Bernie. that's awesome. But I, I do have to tell you, um, it's, it's not... It's not Bernie. It, it, it's me. What? It, it's Matt. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's me. I, I don't. I'm, stop. I'm disappointed in you, man. Look, this, this is about the age of truth. And we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be past this kind of fake news, fake out, like can't trust anything nonsense. And you're supposed to be one of the chairman of it. I'm I know. Totally I know. And I realized. You. I, I realized halfway through the bit that this costume was so January 21st and I started to feel a little behind the time. So, uh, so there it is. The cat's out of the bag. It's me. But I have to say, Tim, I do have to say, I have to shout out Charlotte's own Morris costumes. They handmade these puppies for us. He, they, they Are they not amazing? So shout out to Morris costumes, the amazing creatives down there. We love you guys. Um, and, uh, yeah, the stuff that, that start that, uh, Charlotte tool, tool bank's doing awesome stuff. Yeah. I, I mean, I love those gloves and it's amazing, but I'm just really disappointed in you because authenticity, as you and I have discussed is supposed to be, I'm here freezing my Tim, Easter Tim, off in the middle of my, this warehouse. Your green screen, my green screen was on the fritz. Your green screen's now off. You're also lying. So down off the high horse, please. Why don't we just get going? <laughs> I'm, I'm disappointed in myself. I'm sorry. Tim, go, just on. go think about what you've done. And we're going to pull you back in later in the program, including for the highly anticipated sponsor song, which everyone should be aware we are actually going to do at the end of today's event instead of at the beginning. So if you want to see what ridiculous musical rendition we have in store to thank our sponsors this month, please stick with us to the end of this morning's event. Now, for those of you who are joining us on Zoom, just a few housekeeping items. First and most importantly, do choose speaker view, not gallery view, speaker view. You should see that option in the top right corner of your Zoom screen. Uh, this will allow you to best see the person who is speaking or performing at any given time. Secondly, everyone is muted by default to keep the audio as clear as possible. So please do keep yourself muted during the program. That said, we'd love for you to turn your camera on by clicking start video so we can see all your beautiful faces and you can interact with us and show your love for this morning's performers and speakers by using the chat feature or the reaction icons, which are both found down there at the bottom of your screen. And look, if you hear something you really like, hey, maybe just high five your webcam, right? Although disclaimer, we are not responsible for any damage caused by high fiving your webcam. Just wanna make, make that clear. All right, folks, our global theme this morning is divergent. We're so glad you're here with us to celebrate and explore that theme with us this morning. Uh, the theme of divergent was chosen by our Valencia chapter and presented globally by mail, uh, by, excuse me, by Basecamp this month and their awesome email solution, Hey. And yes, you will hear us sing our love to Basecamp at the end of this morning's event uh, as well. Now this theme instantly made me think of the phrase divergent thinking. 
divergent thinking, which is like this way of creative, uh, generating creative ideas in a spontaneous sort of free flowing, nonlinear manner. And often this results in discovering lots of new ideas, many possible solutions, including unforeseen or unpredictable ones. So I invite all of you to consider this morning, how can divergent thinking help us tackle some of the big complex problems facing our community and our world right now? And how can we introduce divergent thinking into the way we work every day as creators and as builders and as leaders? Uh, I personally think that one way to create this new habit is to regularly and intentionally put ourselves in the same spaces with those who we've traditionally de deemed different from us, with people who have a completely different way of seeing the world. You know, and this could spark divergent thinking for us. And I do think that Black History Month, which we just started celebrating this week, is a perfect opportunity to do that. Now, I also have to say, Josh Jacobson, who is our speaker this morning, is gonna get us thinking divergently in a little while as well. So folks, we have a lot to pack in in the next hour. But first, we have a manifesto here at Creative Mornings. It's our North Star, and you know, in the midst of so much chaos and uncertainty these days, our manifesto really keeps us grounded and focused and always aware of why we gather together each month. And so this morning, I'd love for our very own co-MC, Michelle Gabadia, to read our manifesto aloud for all of us to hear. Michelle, would you please do us the honor of reading our manifesto for us this morning? It would be my honor on this amazing February 5th in our Black History Month to read our manifesto. Everyone is creative. A creative life requires bravery and action, honesty and hard work. We are here to support you, celebrate you, and encourage you to make the things you love. We believe in the power of community. We believe in giving a damn. We believe in face-to-face -face connections in learning from each other, from others, in hugs and high fives. We bring together people who are driven by passion and purpose, confident that they will inspire one another and inspire change in neighborhoods and cities around the world. Everyone is welcome. And all of y'all are welcome here today. Good morning, friends. It's really, really cool to be in your presence once more. This is the only way to start off any month on the first Friday is with all of you. And we have an amazing, amazing morning uh, ahead of us. And as I think of divergent, I think about the definition as it says that divergent starts in the same place. So it's something that starts in the same place and then moves away from each other. So I think particularly in Black History Month, I think about our roots and how roots are divergent. And we all come from the same tree and we grow and move and shift in different places. But if we can remember our roots, remember our values, remember why we came together in the first place and then have creativity of thought in divergent ways, only magic can happen. And I hope you join in the celebration of Black History Month this month to explore where your roots are and where divergence is. And I think our speaker is really going to speak to that a little bit. So I'm excited to hear that. But like I said, it is Black History Month, holla back. And who better than our favorite friend to Charlotte is Creative is Caden Hunt, who's gonna kick us off with a poem. You might remember Caden. She uh, graduated from RJ Kell High School. She painted the rock in front of her school about Black Lives Matter, got vandalized, and then an entire thing started, uh, a revolution, if you will, right here in Charlotte. And she's still a firecracker. So let's watch this uh, uh, production from her that she put out uh, very recently uh, and, and, and hear her words. I woke up today with Toni Morrison on my tongue, Madam T.J. Walker getting my edges done, Amiri Baraka handed me a poem unsung, and James Baldwin looking down on me like a loved one. I woke up today loving the skin I'm in, relishing the beauty in my melanin, no so feminine, self-love present in my regimen, feeling my own vibe Duke Ellington, and if you're hating baby that's just a sin. This is my destiny child, I'm a survivor stepping in. Black History Month is a reminder of the excellence I ascended from, knowing my story just begun, and healing from generational trauma in the long run. I woke up today tired of defending a nation built on shoulders of our discrimination, powered by indignation, destroyed by capitalization, and still wondering, 
where's our reparations? But it's just an observation. I woke up today with curiosity like Ida B. Wells, artistry like Zora Neale Hurston, innovation like Garrett Morgan, and creativity like Shirley Jackson. It took years to finally find the beauty in my skin, systematic racism reflecting within, code switching like I had a twin, but I recognized the strength in my kin, knowing being black was always a win. It wasn't something that I had to get, honey, it was forever built in. I've always known that my time was coming, so today I looked myself in the mirror and I just said, win. I woke up today proud of how fast I'm growing and knowing my drive isn't slowing, shea butter on my skin showing, I'm glowing. All I do is keep knocking them off their feet, leaving them wonder like Stevie, like baby, where you going? Beautiful thoughts in my mind, it's just overflowing. I woke up today with strength like Muhammad Ali, a vision like Jean-Michel Basquiat, respect like Aretha Franklin, and a message like Robert Abed. Know your history, know your worth. Bye. <laughs> I'm telling you, when the young lead us and when we listen to their words, we just have to follow. So shout outs to her for blessing us with that piece. I, I am already inspired and I feel my melanin tingling. So it's fantastic. We're switching it up this morning. We're gonna start with something different. Uh, and, and we're gonna start with some music early in our program today. And we're going to hear from the amazingly talented Noelle Fairline and Maria Howell. I don't know if you've listened to them yet. Dope. Last night, I just had to run back their, their, their Christmas album. I had to, I needed it in my spirit. I know it's not the holidays anymore, but uh, sometimes you just need to hear amazing music. Uh, my favorite is their rendition of This Christmas is like a black Christmas song, This, but they, they put the soul on it. It was fantastic. So they're gonna bless us this morning with some music on our Charlotte Star, uh, Charlotte Star Room music stage. Uh, and it's gonna kick us off this morning. And I'm excited for all of you to hear them. If you haven't heard of them before, you're going to be instant fans uh, and go ahead and go get their music because you need it in your collection. I love the West, North and South, they're both the best, but I only love to go there as a guest, cause I love being here with you, I love the sea, love the shore, love the rocks and what is more, with you they'd never be a bore, cause I love being here with you. Singing in the shower, laughing by the hour. Life is such a breezy game. I love all kinds of weather, long as we're together. Oh, I love to hear you say my name. I love good wine, fine cuisine, yeah. Our candlelights, I love the scene. But baby, if you know just what I mean, oh, I love here with you I love a dance with Fred Astaire Brando's eyes your Brenna's hair but I think it's only fair to say that I love being here with you and Cary Grant oh dude I day his other charm takes me away but don't get me wrong how do you say I love being here with you. Oh, Basie's band is swinging. I like Ella singing. Of course, there's something else you know. They know how to play it. They know how to say it. They just wind it up and let it go. I love the thrills of New York shows. I want to kiss Durante's nose. Yeah. But let me say before I close, that I love being here with you. Come on, Noah. I 
dance with Brad Astaire. Ooh, you'll burn his hair. Mmm, did I say Brando's eyes? But let me say before I close, oh, I wanna, I wanna dance with you. Early in the morning, Charlotte, you, yeah. Let me say before I close that I love being here with you. Check this out. I love being here with you. Come on, North Freight Line. I love You were born to sing at 8.30 in the morning, I'll tell you what. Who told you that? <laughs> good morning, everybody. And around the world, it's so good to be here. Thank you for having us. I'm Maria, this is Noel, and we're doing our thing with you this early. It's a wonderful way to start the day. <laughs> it is and a right, wonderful way to start the day. But you know what? There's a song that was on my heart to do this morning, and we want to put our little Friday morning spin on it. Something goes a little like this. <laughs> I actually, love mysteries. Actually, it doesn't even go something like this. It goes exactly like this. It's <laughs> Whatever you say. Keep on learning, soldiers. I keep on warring. Whoa, I keep on turning, cause it won't be too long. Powers, I keep on lying. While your people I keep on dying yeah. Whoa. I keep on turning Cause it won't be too long no. I'm so darn glad he let me try it again Cause the last time on earth I lived a whole world of sin I'm so glad that I know more than I knew then Gonna keep on trying Till I reach my highest ground Teachers, I keep on teaching while those preachers oh, keep on preaching. Whoa, I keep on turning because it won't be too long. Lovers, I keep on. Believers, ooh, keep on believing, yeah. Sleepers, I just stop sleeping, cause it won't be too long. Oh, no. I'm so darn glad he let me try it again, 
is the last time on earth I lived a whole world of sin. I'm so glad that I know more than I know, then I'm gonna keep on trying till I reach my highest ground. Oh, no, I know. Till I reach my highest ground, yeah. So no one's gonna bring me down, no. Oh, till I, till I reach my. That's all I could say. And you know, I'm not even a morning person. I'm a morning person one morning a month. The fact that y'all got up and did that just literally blows my mind and cracks my heart wide open. <laughs> it, so, it, well, it, it, it's all Maria. I've been riding on her coattails for years. We all have been riding on Maria's coattails. And I allow him years. to. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Noel, Maria, thank you so much. We love you so both. We're grateful you shared your musical gifts with us thank this you. morning. Folks, to thank them, please tip them. That is the best way to say thanks. So um, thank you again. We have another special guest with us this morning. My counterpart at Buffalo, New York chapter, the host of Creative Mornings Buffalo, Kelly Atkinson. This is a new segment that our friends in Austin started last week that we're calling the, ba the Baton Pass. And they graciously had me pop into uh, the Austin event last Friday morning to invite them to join us this morning in Charlotte. I think we have some Austin folks here with us. So Texas in the house. And now Kelly is here to invite all of you all to Boston next Friday. So Kelly, how are things going in the other Queen City? Thank you, Matt. It is cold here indeed. Or, or is it Bernie? No matter. I'm so glad to join you all in the Queen City of the South. The talent abounds. And I'm here today with an invite to a celebration of the 60th gathering. Yes five winters long of creatives in the Queen's city of the North, Buffalo. In one room, at the same time, we will convene virtually in an intimate gathering to hear from three creatives, a singer, a poet, and a painter. There will be music, laughter, new people, and perhaps a rogue Starbucks cup, as has been seen on your Queen's table. Everyone is welcome, so take heed and join us in the land of snow and ice lakes, because after all, winter is here. To the Queen Cities. To the Queen Cities. Kelly, I don't know. I, I've been watching Bridgerton, but I feel like I just I just watched like the next episode of Bridgerton, just watching you do that with that amazing Tim, Tim Miner, we love Kelly. Can you pop in and, and say hi real quick too? Yeah, I I, I, this is a real treat, everybody. Um, you know, the thing about Creative Mornings, and, and I think that the world of Zoom, as much as it's taken away, has given us so much. We can be with other chapters around the world. And while you guys may not know it, we got our chapter very uh, around the exact same time that Buffalo did. And we kind of decided that we were going to be sister cities and have pushed each other every step of the way. So, so much of the cool stuff that you enjoy, like in uh, on screen here or in real life has come because of this collaboration, this relationship that we've had with Kelly and her amazing team and Buffalo, the frozen tundra queen city. Uh, <laughs> and it's just the joy of pushing each other creatively. And so to be able to present her to you guys today and introduce you to someone who's been such a such a joy for us and such a creative um, inspiration for our team to push harder, try new things, figure out how we can become more relevant to the city around us. Kelly, you're just, you have been an incredible gift to this chapter and I'm just really happy that, that you're here with us today. You're just a light and, and I, we thank you so much for everything you've done for us. I would honor me, sir. <laughs> I'm glad to see you all from the North. Committing. She's sticking to character. She's, I love it. She, wow. Wow. So this is Jared Leto style, like won't break character <laughs> commitment to this. All right. right. I'm with it. 
Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Kelly. I will be there. I hope everyone here goes to Buffalo via Zoom next week, <laughs> next Friday, and uh, keeps it creative. It's like a progressive dinner party, except breakfast, I guess. Um, so thanks again, folks. It is now time to bestow a Creative Charlatan with a Bolt of Inspiration Award. And here to do that is your friend and mine, Tori Savage from The Savage Way. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's Tori from The Savage Way. <laughs> Kelly, that was amazing. I'm going to need to work on my accents. Um, oh, no, it's great. <laughs> welcome, everyone. OK, no, uh, I'm Tori with The Savage Way, uh, and I'm here to give away the bolt of inspiration. So um, this is our way of just recognizing some really amazing, creative uh, human beings in the Charlotte neighborhoods. So um, this is all made possible by our friends at Ortho Carolina. So thank you, Ortho Carolina. And um, I want you to know if you're um, if you're new here uh, at Creative Mornings, uh, this is just you know our way of of giving a little honor and and a uh, award out. So the Savage Way, we do moss art and clean graffiti all over the nation. Um, but we always tell you a little bit about our recent projects. So our most recent, we've been working on some fern luscious walls like this. The latest one went to um, Emily Breeze in Charlotte. She's a fitness guru and um, it, it's been awesome. So if you wanna find out more about some of our, our stuff we have going on, you can look on Instagram at The Savage Way. We, you see all our, our beautiful things and we have an online shop coming soon. So, but let's get to the real deal here and talk about the Bolt of Inspiration. Um, just a little recap. Last month, we recognized Matt Alvis of Tat Gallery and he is proudly showcasing his Bolt at um, the Tough Ass Crew Gallery. Um, but this month, we are going to highlight Lucas Ayers and he is the founder of CLT Shooters on Instagram. Now, Lucas started CLT Shooters as an Instagram feature account, and his goal was to simply highlight um, local photographers. But over time, it just became a lot more than that. It is transformed into a community of creatives that um, they host monthly meetups and workshops and events. And it they, they just started a magazine. They're featuring over 80 different Charlotte creatives. It's, it's awesome. So look, Lucas, um, you and your team are doing big things. Thank you so much. Um, everyone make sure to check them out online at uh, CLT Shooters. And Lucas, uh, thank you for creating a space for artists to, to shine. And congratulations on your bolt of inspiration. Thank you. See, every time you think you're an expert on these things, I'm muted. Um, guys, I... I wholly agree with the bolt of inspiration this month. Lucas is doing, and his crew have done something that we love doing here at Creative Morning Charlotte, and that's build community. He couldn't find the collective of, of creatives that he wanted to, and he built it. And that's exactly what the bolt of inspiration is about. And it's exactly why Charlotte is Creative started the Hug Micro Grant program with the help of this community three years ago. You know, creatives are popping up and doing incredible work all over the Queen City, but they need our love, they need our encouragement, and they need some dollars. So every month with the help of our amazing sponsors, T. Reed and Company, uh, Google Fiber, and Noda Brewing, we're able to give out $250 micro grants to creatives who are doing work sometimes in isolation or unadorned all over the city. This month, we have two that we're giving away. One is to Kerma Moraine, who is an author. She has written a book about poetry, her life, coffee, which I personally appreciate. Um, and she's going to use her, her $250 to help with publishing costs. Also on the creative publishing end, we have Greg Russell of Inks Comics. They put out a comic zine every month that you can find all over Charlotte for free. It highlights black and white art and social commentary from creatives all over the city. And they too are gonna to use their $250 on those printing and publishing costs. You have helped us do, give and support over 250 creative endeavors from amazing individuals and organizations all over the city since 2017. And now we're able to do some bigger things. Last fall, we were able to get a COVID-19 relief fund grant uh, that was managed by United Way and Foundation for the Carolinas to take hugs to the next step. So for huggies 
people that have gotten $250 and put them to incredible use in the past, we're now able to give out $1,000, what we call bear hugs. These are for previous hug grantees that are going to take their project or take a new project or spinoff project to the next level. We have three in our first class of, of bear hug grantees. She built this city, uh, which is an incredible organization devoted to getting uh, young girls, especially into construction and construction leadership. They're going to use it uh, for an environmentally sensitive uh, recycling project where they take waste and turn it into materials that can be used in farms across the Charlotte region. Then the Do Greater Foundation and Coach William McNeely, who you've seen on Creative Mornings here, he uh, is providing tech instruction to under-resourced communities across Charlotte. And he can't do it inside right now. So he is using his $1,000 bear hug to buy an amazing router that can cast over a wide area and he can turn large outdoor areas into outdoor classrooms and provide uh, you know, Wi-Fi and broadband for areas that just are dead spots in Charlotte. And finally, Brie Stallings. If you don't know who Brie is, I guarantee you know her work. She is an activist. She is a muralist. She shows everywhere from galleries across Charlotte to walls. Here she is with a, with this week with a, a, a mural she's created in Gastonia. But Brie is going to use her $1,000 bear hug to enhance a project with Time Out Youth that, that involves them in an interactive program that celebrates LGBTQ culture and helps those kids with identity issues and feeling confident. And it's going to be amazing. And so she's using that as part of a larger grant. Guys, we have boatloads of creative intelligence and chutzpah and passion and bravery all over the city, but it needs us to recognize it, see it, call it out, support it, tell other people about it, and in many cases, give money. So if you are interested in giving a hug in any amount, $5 will be put to use. Or applying for a hug, go to huggrant.com. We want to see you and we want to support you. All right. Now, Matt, you ready to move on to this next thing, my friend? This is a, we, we started this uh, segment last month and I got, I got so giddy about it. I'm glad we're going we're to continue doing it right now. I am, I'm super excited about this. Guys, one of the things that, we, that has just been a bummer about COVID is not accidentally meeting and bumping into people. I realized after a couple of months, like how many times you'd be in a coffee shop or just walking down the street and you bump into somebody and a friend goes, oh, hey, you should know this person. We're not accidentally meeting anybody right now. We have to be intentional about it. So we're going to speed date five creatives with five 30 second videos. This is going to show you in less than four minutes how amazing and how broad and how diverse the creative culture is in Charlotte. Matt, I did do the math. It I is, just had to carry the one there. Yeah. Much I know. Less it's less than four minutes. minutes. It's all good. I know I'm an English major, but I can do that, I think. All right. All let's right. do this thing. Let's do it. First up is the Charlotte Jewish Film Festival. It started last night, but you can jump into it online right now. Here we go. Charlotte Jewish Film Festival, which should actually be called the Charlotte Human Film Festival, shows films that you can't see anywhere else, that are about the human experience through some kind of Jewish lens. That means if you're Jewish, cool, and if you're not, well, then you might learn something new. We are all about silver linings right now, so silver lining number one is our entire festival is online, so we can reach way more people than the 200 sitting in the movie theater. Number two is the Q&As with filmmakers and stars who would never come to Charlotte, but now they can make an appearance in your living room. Our first three films were released last night, so hurry and check us out at charlottejewishfilm.com. Shalom, y'all. All right, that, that wins just for the shalom, y'all. Shalom, like, y'all. I gotta have a shirt that says that. And plus, if you're not Jewish, cool. Shalom, y'all. Exactly. And you know, I, 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 have, I resist watching these before. Like, I like to see them fresh, you know, along with the rest of the folks here at Creative Morning. So this is the first time I'm seeing these. All right. You're going spoiler free. I've, I've seen these. So okay. I'm really okay. excited. We just talked about Lucas Ayers and gave him the bolt of inspiration. If you want to know more about him and what he's built, let's go to the tape. My name is Lucas Ayers. I am the creator and founder of CLT Shooters. I'm a 24-year-old photographer born and raised here in Charlotte. 
I originally started Seal 2 Shooters as a way for me to meet new friends and immerse myself in the photo industry. As Seal 2 Shooters has grown, I've seen the talent that the city has and believe that we have the ability to be a creative city that one day rivals that of Atlanta or New York City. Seal 2 Shooters provides our city with a creative community and platform aimed to promote collaborations and growth within the Charlotte creative community. Find us everywhere at Seal 2 Shooters or seal2shooters.com. Shalom, y'all. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna keep using that. I, I know I'm gonna hear that a lot. Um, again, I just love that Lucas didn't see the community that he wanted, and he used creativity to build it. All yeah. right. Next up, we have just this beam of joy and light that's gonna come through the through the uh, the screen. I will say, listen carefully because she was socially responsible and masked during this. But it's our great friend Lavana Parks who just. Her mixture of whimsy and wonder lights me up. Do it. What up with you? My name is Lavana Parks. Lavana. I am a professional artist specializing in spreading joy through the use of murals, caricature, and illustration. What I love about the Charlotte creative community is when you are willing to put in the work, the community will support it. You can find me at Lavana Parks on Instagram, Facebook, and LavannaParks.com. <laughs> I love Lavana's sense of style. And that was the mural she did for the Economy CLT pro uh, program that we that we worked with, right? That's absolutely right. Like uh, we wanted to to work with the county and, and uh, the city and Ray Ward and organizations all over the city to remind people in an artistic way, just to be safe, wear masks, be socially distant. and. You know, you can put up posters and you could do PSAs, but if you can inf infuse it with uh, Lavana, you got to do it. Absolutely. All right, here we go. Back to art. Uh, we met online Harvey Ponchal, an amazing mandala artist. She's trained as a computer technician, but she made has made art and very intricate, beautiful art uh, that's inspired by India and her home country in like that's her passion and that's now her life. So here we go with Harvey. Hello everyone. This is Harvey, mixed media artist. You can reach out to me for custom artwork, personalized gifts, mandala artwork, handmade decor items, and large canvas paintings. You can learn more about my art by following me at Kal Harvey. You can help me out by showing what I do to world and share it with your friends and family. Thank you, Charlotte is creative, and I love to be part of this creative community. Oh man, I love her work. I mean, and I, I love that she was throwing the stuff up and then catching a new piece on the way down. Well, she also, so she has all these time-lapse videos on her Instagram feed, which I just dropped in the chat. And they're totally, if you need like, just to kind of meditate or, or we hear all the time from people that it like calms them down to watch them. So head over there. And see her and then you can buy or or hire her to do some art for you now we've got bringing up the rear and by no means last you know i love that we've had a youth movement on this episode uh, on this episode on this episode of charlotte is creative <laughs> very very Not special thanks bernie sanders but <laughs> on on this gathering you know we started with caden and she's a freshman in college now we're going to go to xavier cheek who is an artist that again we found on instagram and this this dude can paint he can draw he's a mixed media artist and so we asked him what can you do in five minutes and he made this beautiful cloudscape that he, we've now sped up to fit the 30 second profile so here we go xavier cheek amazing 19 year old artist okay for us um, getting our part it sounded like someone was freestyling with that with that I, sick I think we need to acknowledge 
and it looks like I'm getting a little slow here, but I think we need to acknowledge that if you've got to make some sales calls while you're on uh, Creative Mornings on, on Zoom or YouTube, you got you do you, all right? We're, we're getting in your brain in the back end. So it's okay. You got you to move some widgets. It's all right. It's dedication. It's dedication. So that video was a part of the Ortho Carolina series, the Equal Time series that we're doing, profiling, <laughs> you know, you can book an appointment with Ortho Carolina in five minutes. What can a creative do in five minutes? So that, I'm so glad that we were able to include that as a part of this segment. Awesome. Absolutely. And, and it looks like, looks like Tim might be starting to slow down on us. Rut row. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're back. Okay. Folks, All right. I'm turning uh, off my video to help out. I've got kids doing know. homework right now. Yeah, exactly. It's the homeschooling. All right. Thanks. Uh, thank you for everyone that submitted the 30 second pitches. And uh, if you're interested in, in, in uh, doing a 30 second pitch with us, let us know, reach out to us. And, uh, and we or even tell us in the chat and we'll reach out to you and we can sneak into a future Creative Mornings Charlotte event. Okay, now we are going to do one more thing before we bring up our speaker and that is play a game and give away some prizes. So today's time to win game is called what's going on behind the mask? What is going on behind the mask? Because, you know, we're all wearing masks these days, I hope. We're all supposed to be wearing masks these days. Sometimes you're just wondering like, what's going on? There? What's going on behind there? There must be something else going on. So here's what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna pull up our two contestants. Uh, first, I'm gonna bring up Loanne Lake. Loanne, are you here with us this morning? I am, good morning, Charlotte. Ah, Loanne, good, how, does, how, how are you doing? It's great to see your beautiful good. face. Good, happy new year. <laughs> happy new year to you too. Uh, before we bring up our other contestant, why don't you tell the folks here Kind of what you do out in the world. Sure thing. Uh, hi everyone. I'm Loanne Lake. I am a communications consultant and a freelance writer. So you might have seen my work in Q City Metro or with Charlotte's Got a Lot locally. I ponder nationally, and just working with different nonprofit organizations and great groups like Creative Mornings. Beautiful. Thank you, Loanne. I'm so glad you're here with us this morning. And Thank our you. other contestant is Joe Hunsecker from the Blumenthal. Joe, are you here with us this morning? There you are. Yes, sir, thank you. Oh my gosh, okay. Joe, before we dive into the game, why don't you tell the good friends here at Creative Mornings what you do out there in the world? Uh, so I work for Blumenthal Performing Arts. I work in the programming department uh, and I produce some small comedy shows, Nerdy Night In and Nerdy Night Out. And uh, in my personal life, I have a podcast with my wife called American Timelines. That's part of the Queen City Podcast Network and a brand new podcast called Nerd School, where my super nerdy brother, who knows everything about the Marvel Universe, teaches me uh, with the help of two uh, aides. Uh, they teach me all about uh, nerdism, and I ask them a million questions about comic books and superheroes and all that. So my wife's a tr uh, true crime. She's a true crime buff. So we do this one about true crime and pop culture year by year. Uh, so, yeah. Those are wow. the things so I do. Thanks for having me. Has, yeah. Your nerdy brother has two ner nerdy aides? Yes, and they, they happened, they were Blumenthal employees that one day they were just uh, randomly talking about super nerd stuff, and I was blown away at how nerdy they all were. Uh, Tiffany Bryant-Jackson, if you know her, uh, she, oh, yeah. yeah, she is the surprise nerd because she's super cool, but she's got this nerdy side, and Art Star is the other one. He is a... Uh, front desk security guard if you've ever been to blumenthal the backstage you've probably seen art uh and so he's a super nerd as well so we're excited he's about that podcast superpowers i love it okay so here's how we're going to play the game loanne and joe tim and i are going to each take turns reading a short poem a little rhyme stanza to you and the final you know the final rhyme is the answer okay but what we're looking to do is what's going on behind the masks of these famous charlatans and our first famous charlatan is going to be the one and only harvey gantt so tim Let's, uh, let's have you read the, the little poem about Mr. Gant. And if he's not here, okay, if he's not here, then I'm gonna do it for him. All right, I'm gonna do it for him because I think Tim's having some technical issues. So here we go, Loanne, uh, sorry, no, I'm gonna start with Joe. Joe, this one's for you, so just listen carefully. Here we go. Harvey Gant has made his name as architect and mayor, but secretly he walks around enjoying creamy layers. So serve him up that blend of cheddar Peppers, mayo, please, because underneath his mask, he's eating some. Uh, some peppers and mayo. Um, 
uh, uh, hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> What do you so call serve it? him up that blend of cheddar peppers, mayo, please, because underneath his mask, he's eating some. Oh, it's supposed to rhyme with please. Yes, absolutely. Uh, cheese. P let's let's give it to you. Pimento cheese. Pimento cheese is yes. what is going on underneath Mayor Gant's mask. You can see right there. We've re we've removed the mask. Well, he's, he's, and he's, eating a, the secret. he's eating an entire. Container of pimento cheese. He lo he loves he loves he loves. <laughs> that can't be good for you. <laughs> okay, all right, Luann, let's move on to you. Here we go. Listen okay. carefully. This one's going to be Mayor Vi Lyles. So now our mayor is Vi Lyles, and she loves a frozen treat that you can get at Camp North End, just off of North Graham Street. Of all Queen City mayors, she's the coolest one by far because she eats sorbet on a stick. Homemade down at. Oh God, I should know this. I don't. <laughs> uh, oh, pop, are bar. In the pop bar. Pop bar. Pop bar. Yes. All right. Yes, you can ask the audience. No question about it. There it is. We've removed the mask, and Mayor Lyles is eating the pop bar. Okay. Uh, two more to go. Joe, you're up. <laughs> listen. Listen carefully. All right. I got. Michael listen. Jordan owns our city's Hornets Hoop Fest Club. And while he's known to spend some time down at the Selwyn pub, he also dons his mask and rides to Fourth Ward on a cycle to secretly eat fried pickles from... Uh, is that Murphy's? <laughs> uh, what's that, the name of that Audience? fried pickle? Anyone? He rides down to Fourth, fourth Road on his cycle to eat cycle. fried pickles from... Alexander Michael. Ah, yes. Uh, at the end of the day, it's going to be, can you actually fourth say ward. It I'm the wrong word. I don't know. It's dropped in the chat. Yeah, these are early morning rhymes. And it doesn't rhyme. I can't rhyme. <laughs> okay, final one. Morning. Final one. Here we go. Loan. Our city's moolah legend is a man named Hugh McCall. He's famous for some banking stuff, but guess what? That's not all. We saw him down on Monroe Road masked up like he's a thief Sneaking veggies fresh my farm made at. Wait, I missed the rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> Gus <Really>? Sir Beef. <laughs> I love I love how this game is just devolved into reading read, the chat. So read the chat. You know what? I, I blame the creator of the game myself. I don't think I think it's my fault, but I'm gonna call it a tie. I'm gonna say that. Luann and Joe, you have tied on this one. Absolutely. <laughs> so thank you for playing. Thank you for being here. Uh, you both have unbelievable mask ray vision. Uh, so there are uh, no losers at Creative Mornings, only non-winners, which means both of you are receiving an awesome gift basket from our friends at Pure Intentions Coffee. It will be delivered to you. So thanks to everyone at Pure Intentions Coffee for uh, your That's ongoing intention. partnership with us here. Thank you both, Loanne and Joe. Oh, and now we've arrived at our you. main event. And I'm wondering if Tim is back because I wanted Tim to introduce our speaker. Tim, are you here? Says, I will try to get back for the Josh intro, but he's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so hopefully we'll have, we'll have Tim back shortly here, but I am so excited to introduce you to our speaker on the theme of Divergent this morning, the one and only founder of Next Stage Consulting, Josh Jacobs said, hello, Josh, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well, thank you. It's like my screen has gone to some other uh, format here, but shalom y'all, how are you doing? <laughs> happy morning, happy Friday, hope everybody's doing well. Well, I'm handing the baton over to you. Shal sh sh shalom, y'all, and uh, it's great to see you this morning. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And I think what Tim would have said is uh, that he wore his sweater vest because I also was wearing a sweater vest. So, uh, you guys are bro the bro brothers in sweater sweater vestum. We are the brothers in sweater vests. That's right. Um, we're known for our sweater vests, and we've had beef in the past. Not Sir Gu Gus Sir beef, but we've had beef in the past about who uh, who is the sweater vest king and. I think given he's off video, uh, I will claim that mantle. Uh, good morning, everybody. Great to see you. Thank you for having me here. Um, today uh, is a special day. I'm wearing a sweater vest, what I call a SV, SV, SV. 
I have a whole closet full of C's. Uh, and, but I haven't worn too many of them uh, over the past year or so. Uh, so today is sort of a, a special day. I got all dressed up uh, for creative mornings here in my office, my home office, um, wearing pants that button. Uh, I'm wearing shoes. Uh, I, I have a belt on. Uh, my wife saw me putting a belt on this morning and said, ooh, fancy, you're wearing a belt. Uh, so I'm feeling, feeling sort of fancy here in my uh, grown-up clothes. I haven't been wearing a lot of them. I hope some of you are rocking the Zoom mullet uh, this morning. I know I've been doing a lot of Zoom mullets, uh, dress shirt up top, but pajama bottoms on the bottom. And uh, that's been one of the unique features of my last year here uh, in, uh, in COVID land. Uh, over the last year, our firm has been disrupted something fierce. I run and manage uh, a consulting firm for what has predominantly been nonprofit organizations. Uh, called Next Stage, um, kind of management consulting for the social good sector. Uh, and, you know, before the pandemic, we would have been out in our cars crisscrossing the Queen City, meeting with nonprofit board members and staff leaders. Uh, I've been most at home uh, in front of a whiteboard, getting nerdy with, with uh, dry erase uh, markers. Uh, Matt and Tim know me best through that. Uh, we worked together back in 2018 to help launch Charlotte is Creative's uh, strategic business plan as a part of Cultivate, a program that uh, my colleague um, Kaylin Haldeman uh, and I uh, manage for our firm. So that was where we used to be. Uh, so where have we been? Well, uh, almost uh, overnight, it seemed like I can recall back mid-March, we became a uh, nearly entirely digital firm, uh, almost overnight. Um, Zoom, without question, saved uh, our firm, uh, saved how we do what we do. Um, we had to completely reinvent uh, ourselves uh, and uh, rethink how we, how we do what we do from facilitation, uh, strategic planning is a, a big uh, part of what we do. So you know, how to do that without a whiteboard, without being with people. Our team had to figure out how to interact with each other. Uh, like I'm sure many of you had to figure out how to work uh, differently. And our service lines changed significantly. We had um, previously um, been more strategic planning uh, and focused on helping uh, vision. Uh, and during this time, we've had to really partner with our organizations as we've shouldered change management and how to help nonprofits that are on the, the front lines of, of social good during this pandemic um, shoulder the changes and the challenges uh, that they've seen. So uh, that, that's been our past year uh, for us as, a, as an organization. And you know, ultimately the theme today is about divergent and I can't think of a, I can't think of any other way to describe what this last year has been like for us, I'm sure for everyone in America, but divergent. Um, you know, this, this idea of creating something different. Uh, and for a while there, it felt like free fall, it felt like we were uh, reacting far more than we were being proactive. Um, but little by little, we started to adjust, you know, the new rules of how to do this work. Um, we founded a, a digital roundtable uh, called What's Next? Uh, and uh, our first time convening uh, the nonprofit social good leaders from board members and staff and corporate social responsibility folks and folks in philanthropy and many of the people who are tuning in here are regular viewers. We had never convened in our lives. We really didn't see ourselves as a convener uh, heading into um, this, this COVID season. And now we have a, uh, a regular uh, digital roundtable uh, that uh, is seen by, we've had more than a thousand people uh, tune in for it over the course of this year. In fact, I'm in front of our, our branded Zoom background, which I, that was not a term I thought I would say. If you had asked me this time last year, I wouldn't have thought I would be saying on Creative Mornings, branded Zoom background, but that's what it is. Um, and uh, this will always be a part of us now. You know, that's, that's sort of the potential of and impact of this pandemic was to actually find new ways of doing things and to actually embrace that. Um, you know, our firm uh, adjusted uh, and uh, largely recovered uh, by the fall, uh, but our, our home lives have been very different. I'm sure your home lives are different as well. Uh, our team at Next Stage has been uh, adjusting to a lot of things, you know, there's been a lot of challenges that we've had to overcome as a team professionally and in our personal lives. Uh, for our part, uh, uh, being home a lot uh, is uh, not easy. Uh, being stuck in your home, it's, it's boring at times. 
Um, my wife, who is also uh, working from home during this time, uh, and I are now coworkers. Uh, that that's a unique uh, unique opportunity for us to to determine, figure that out. I'm on Zoom all all the time. Uh, I, I literally live on Zoom, and it is exhausting in in a new and different way. Uh, this idea of uh, sitting all the time. I haven't had a desk job in 25 years. You know, I, I'm. I, I can't believe uh, what my day sometimes is with just back-to-back -back Zoom. So, you know, to combat that sort of sitting all the time, uh, we've taken to walking. And I, I know a lot of folks are, I'm sure uh, those tuning in, you know, going on walks has become kind of like the highlight of the week. Harris Teeter trips, uh, particularly during early days, uh, toilet paper and, and paper towels um, and walks. That's basically uh, our uh, social life uh, now. In part because we are sheltering pretty, uh, pretty uh, severely, we have uh, older uh, parents we take care of, and we're just not willing to put ourselves in harm's way uh, and, and potentially risk them uh, being exposed to something. So we take on the brunt of this, and, and it does create a little, little bit of boredom. Of gosh, these these walks are everything. They are everything, and in fact, I, I look forward to them all, all week long. We, we take a big one on Sunday. It's a uh, four mile walk through our neighborhood. It takes about 90 minutes. Uh, and my wife, who is absolutely my best friend uh, and the person that uh, I, I don't know how I do this without her, uh, we never run out of things to talk about. We always have something interesting to talk about on this walk. And I feel closer to her uh, as a result of the pandemic. And that's another sort of silver lining that I didn't think divergently that we would actually uh, connect uh, in this way uh, so well. You know, walking the, the, our neighborhood, we have these, these amazing tall oaks and poplars that sort of line the, the main streets, the main drag through our neighborhood that uh, are like these talismans, these, these friends uh, that I'm visiting uh, on a week, weekly basis to be inspired. I, I see them and I, and I feel connection. I feel alive. Uh, these trees are so meaningful uh, to uh, the journey of, of my pandemic experience. Uh, because they also remind me of my purpose. They remind me of why I'm here. I've long thought of my life as just a branching tree. Uh, and uh, when we started out, uh, you know, as young people, we don't typically understand how decisions we make and little choices all the way along are taking us down a branch. Uh, we start with so many branches, so many divergent paths that we could take. Uh, and and with, maybe without thinking, uh, we start down a path. Um, the major you uh, took in college or the friends you started to uh, connect with, the, the city you moved to uh, as you left school, uh, that they take you significantly down a path. Uh, and sometimes you can find yourself 10 years later looking back saying, How, you know, wh whoops, I didn't realize that I was actually making really clear decisions about uh, where I was going. Um, and such was the case for me. I, I was fumbling a lot in my early days, just every decision was just to get me from here to there. And I really wasn't thinking about it as a journey uh, and as taking me someplace different. Uh, but now, you know, in my mid forties, I can look back on the branch on which I stand and I can see exactly how I got here. I can see every decision that took me to this point right now, that upstairs neighbor after college who told me about uh, a really great opportunity at a nonprofit organization uh, that I hadn't been thinking about the trip to New York City after 9-11 that opened up an entirely new path for me that took me to work for some of the, the most well-respected cultural organizations in the world, the Juilliard School Broadway Producing Theater Company. I had these experiences. Uh, and then when an old flame from college came to town and for a wedding in Central Park and we reconnected and she convinced me that I should give up that, that whole life to move to Charlotte, North Carolina, a place I'd never been, a place I love, to come here during the recession to the ruinous job market uh, and finding consulting, it finding me. And then seven years ago when I decided, you know, I'm gonna start my own firm. I, I have something to do in this world. I, I wanna get to the business of it. And I, I found it next stage. Each of those moments is a huge branch diversion uh, and there were other paths I could have taken at every step, and, but I chose these uh, and I own them. And now I look off out at the rest of that branch and what used to seem to go on forever. In fact, when I was young, I used to think, 
there's there's uh, an endless number of directions that I can go. I now realize if I squint, I can actually see where those divergent paths end uh, and come to their conclusion. Uh, but there are a number of pathways forward. There's so many different ways that I can uh, move forward. Uh, and that knowledge is both liberating in some ways, but also a burden because I have purpose and there's a reason I'm here. And I can't willy nilly choose direction anymore. I have to choose with, with integrity. I have to choose with these values that I live with. Uh, and I have to understand that diversity Divergence is a responsibility. And so here I am now managing a firm that's also at a divergent point, uh, and it's exciting. In fact, I'd argue this past year was all inspiration to think about our work differently. Uh, and my colleagues and I have been partnered together. Uh, Janet Urban, a uh, consultant with our firm, has been my primary partner on a really exciting community study uh, that we're doing. We're, we're interviewing uh, 50 plus business leaders for a study we'll be releasing later this spring called The Social Good Re Report. And its subtitle is Profit and Purpose. We're looking at how nonprofits and the private sector relate to each other to really explore that intersectionality between the nonprofit business model and the uh, private sector business model, whether large corporations, mid-size uh, businesses, middle market companies, startups, uh, how nonprofits have uh, a role to play. Uh, in supporting social good that increasingly these, these companies are beginning to recognize are important to their bottom line, important to how they do what they do, whether it's employee retention or cause marketing or diversity inclusion initiatives uh, or emotional well-being, a term I, I hadn't even realized is creeping into corporations now as so many of us are, are uh, stuck in our homes uh, and in front of computers in our uh, home office offices, how we are uh, taking care of ourselves is something that uh, companies are thinking a lot about. And do nonprofits potentially have a role to play uh, in supporting those bottom line driving things inside those companies? This is what we're exploring. And it's really exciting. We're sitting with converse, having conversations with just amazing leaders, uh, corporate leaders and business leaders in our community and listening to how does social good show up in their lives and show up in their companies? We're documenting all of it for uh, this uh, important study that we're releasing uh, in April. We're also doing an, uh, an amazing uh, survey. Uh, in fact, my colleague, uh, Candace Latham, our marketing specialist is gonna share in the chat uh, a link to the survey. We wanna hear from more than a thousand uh, next generation leaders, uh, millennial, Gen Z, uh, 20 to 40 year olds, about what they want out of uh, their corporate lives you know, their workplace, what sort of place they want to work, what, as a consumer, uh, what do they buy and how do they uh, buy? We want to understand this generation because this is the generation that's being disrupted, that's creating a divergent opportunity uh, inside corporate America. And it's exciting. It's, it's, it's an amazing opportunity uh, at this stage for us to really think about how to activate. There are 40,000 plus companies just in Mecklenburg County. And when we think about those that are the most charitable, the uptown companies, uh, those those uh, large corporations, there's you know, thousands and thousands of, of uh, mid-sized companies and business parks across Charlotte. Imagine if we could unleash the, the financial but also relational benefit inside those companies. Really, companies are just microcosms uh, of our community. And if nonprofits could, in fact, be vendors of experiences for employees, we would create a market uh, that could drive forward more uh, fund for uh, their missions and causes while building new relationships with employees who can become volunteers and donors and constituents. It's exciting. And we're about ready to uh, unleash that on the world. So we would welcome your help getting that uh, survey out to the world. Uh, take it yourself, pass it on to others. We are targeting that kind of 20 to 40 year old um, segment of the population. And so that leads me to, you know, this, this uh, looking at this branch uh, that I'm on. Uh, and seeing the spring uh, just down the way and what will happen this spring as the buds on that tree begin to blossom, blossom with our report, blossom with potential. And so I ask you, what's on your branch 
as you look off to the future, as you look back and think about how you got here, what were those important milestones? What were those things that you knew were huge steps, but also maybe weren't sure uh, that diver divergent opportunities that you took, that took you to a whole new place that you're proud of? What were those things you did that you didn't know were so uh, impactful that maybe you would have taken back? And as you look to the future, what choices are you making in, in taking new paths going forward? That's the call to action. To choose, not to sleepwalk, but to choose and, and make a purposeful decision to live with purpose. To know that not choosing a path is also a choice. And we can't do that. I hope you'll take important next steps uh, in your lives that, that help you to improve our community, uh, for example. Uh, we can't keep doing it the way we've always done it. We have to do things differently if we want to uh, improve. Uh, if we want what we want for ourselves and for our city, we have to be making those intentional decisions that take us forward on new and different divergent paths. And I promise you those blossoms that are out there, they're there and you can you can go find them for yourself in whatever decisions that you make for yourself. Um, but the key is to, to make uh, decisions. Uh, and for us, that means taking nonprofits and private sector, that things that don't typically go together and finding a way to marry them up. Uh, I'm inspired by Tim and Matt, who are like gurus of taking two things that don't seem to relate and actually marry, marrying them this morning. We've seen nothing but uh, the, the kind of taking two things and turning it into, into something new. That's sort of unique about Charlotte. It's like one of our brands that you can come here. There's only ones of things. And in Charlotte, you can actually create something new. There's, there's, there's all sorts of opportunity here, um, but we have to take it. We have to see divergence as not something to fear, but instead something to embrace. So that's what I'll leave you with. I hope that you all uh, think a little bit about your own branch and what decisions you're gonna make today that this month, this year, as we come out of this pandemic, as we, as we continue fighting for racial justice in our community, as we, as we understand that we are all one together uh, in community and think about how you will uh, make your own mark uh, and, and take those, those courageous steps out onto a new branch. My name is Josh Jacobson. This was a talk on divergence. Thank you for listening. Well, Matt, if I may, I'd like to, to, I'm back from the abyss. Microsoft kicked me off and forced an update. That was super fun. A little stress in the morning, but I'd like to just say a little bit of something about Josh that I would have said at the beginning. First off, Steve, can you, can you spotlight us, me and Josh next to one another? Just so the world can see. I, who has seen the movie Twins? Let's look at this. Josh is the Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I am clearly the Danny DeVito, but we are clones of one another, and we did come out of the same batch. I'm just Josh. He's very tall. You can't see it from, from uh, Zoom, and I'm very short. And if I'm Josh, if something heavy hit him and then just constrict, you know, like squished everything down and went outward. So, uh, Josh, <laughs> I love being your brother from another mother, my friend. But what I want to say is, so many people talk a good game. So many people are good about being inspirational in the moment and telling you words that are just words. Josh is one of those people that invests in those around him. Okay, Matt and I are better people and better business people and better nonprofit founders because we met Josh Jacobson, Kalen Haldeman and, and his entire team. And that's because he invests himself. So you can look at fancy uh, numbers like he's, you know, in over 10 years worked with more than 200 nonprofits that he's been part of $150 million campaigns at, at, at Juilliard. But the proof is the change he makes in people. Divergent was the perfect topic for him because he just thinks out of the box. He's a free thinker. He's a change maker. He's a deal maker, a challenge taker, a tough love giver, and an absolute butt kicker. If this man sees something in you, he will push you until you attain that. <laughs> and I mean that. And he will call you 
early in the morning. He is up at 4.30. He is asleep at, at, he's not asleep before midnight. And if he has an idea, he will throw it on you. And if you are slacking, he will push you hard. And that is what it takes to make change. And that is exactly why he was our perfect speaker, speaker for Divergent today. And that's what I would have said if Zoom did, and Microsoft did not conspire to, to silence me. Wow. Love you, man. Well, Josh, thank you so, so much for your talk and your, your perspective on the theme of Divergent today. And thanks for all the work you're doing in the community, all the impact you're making. So incredible. You got it. Thank you, guys. Great being here. So folks, we made you a promise and we are men of our word, okay? Tim, we are ending today's event by thanking our incredibly generous sponsors in the way that we prefer to express our love, which is in song form, right? Uh huh. This so is, I mean, yeah. You've been on me about, you know, choosing a more current song because I usually like, I defer to choosing songs from the eighties typically. Um, You're so like a fly trapped in amber is what you are. It's that's, the that's, right, that's right, that's right. 1988, so, so we have picked a current song and we have to shout out our incredible sponsor, Charlotte Star Room. Charlotte Star Room edits all these together for us. They've been with us with, at every single Creative Mornings Charlotte event ever from the very beginning. They are the ones that have to endure these song videos, uh, the, editing these songs yeah. for us every month. This one may have pushed them over the limit. I, I, if you guys think that this next few minutes is painful imagine having to watch this is the best that they could find of the video that we sent them that's they had to watch it over and over again shout out to morgan snow that poor girl deserves better than this steve dare i say take us off the screen and and roll the tape <laughs> got that buzz kicking on a friday morning your intentions open wide. Charlotte Star Room caught us with that warning. Hope they get my better side. They give cash and they get. And in Scoogum's case, we get to use their tag. Four eyes keeps us out of debt. Breathe in deep until you start to get a feeling dropping sugar high. A feeling dropping sugar high. Feeling dropping sugar high. Feeling dropping sugar high. Feeling dropping sugar. Boy and go. Prince our heart's desire. Would they print us some money? And there's one channel. Sets our hearts afire. W F A E E E. Sponsor cash makes us squeal. Drink it in until you start to feel that feeling. Drop a sugar high. Feeling 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 drop of sugar high. Feeling drop of sugar high. Feeling drop of sugar high. Running around like loonies. Jack John's sponsor booty. Feeling drop of sugar high. Mail chip and base camp. We got that lovesick feeling. Cause global partners make our day. And newbie Skillshare taught me pottery wheeling. Keep that sponsor sweetness coming, Papa's way. A feeling drop of sugar high. A feeling drop of sugar high. A feeling drop of sugar high. 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 sugar well that happened i i, I don't <laughs> guys we must we must love our sponsors 
if we're willing to do that. So local sponsors, Four Eyes Web Design, WFAE, Charlotte Star Room, Boingo, Pure Intentions Coffee, and Community Culinary School of Charlotte. We, we actually got their name into the lyrics. We love you. Plus, we're sending deep love to our global sponsors, MailChimp, Basecamp, and Skillshare. They support the entire global community, 223 volunteer-run chapters around the world. So thank you to MailChimp, who has supported Creative Mornings for 11 years now. Check them out at MailChimp.com. Uh, thank you to Skillshare, the online learning community, helping millions take the next step in their creative journey. And you can discover creative inspiration this Black History Month through Skillshare's limited email series, My Creative Roots, four weeks of inspiration for Black artists. Check it out and redeem your free month uh, for Creative Mornings attendees. And finally, a few extra lumens thrown onto this month's presenting partner, Basecamp. While the rest of us simply complain about email, they decided to fix it by creating Hey, which transforms email into something you actually want to use. So check it out at hey.com. And there you have it, folks. We cannot wait to see you next month on March 5th when our speaker will be the amazing comedian, Tara Brown. Yes, speaking on the theme of Ripple. Until then, I wanna thank Michelle Gabadia, Harvey Cummings, Kelly Atkinson, Tori Savage, our musical guests, Noel Friedline and Maria Howell. And of course, our speaker this morning, Josh Jacobson. And thank you to Morris Costumes for the mittens, Bernie mitts. Thank you to our volunteer team and each and every one of you for being with us this morning. And until next month, keep the masks on, keep the faith strong, keep being your beautiful, powerful, creative selves. Love you and we'll see you on March 5th. Thank you. Hi everybody. There we go. And somebody just put in the, in the uh, I hope this lives on the internet forever. And sadly, it will. Harvey has given us watermelon sugar.